our perspective a little bit. So we, we know now that light has a particle wave nature. And along comes this, this idea <laughs> that there are different energy states. So if we uh, took a glass tube, filled it with hydrogen gas, pumped out everything else, filled it with hydrogen gas, stuck an electrode in each end, kind of like our cathode ray tube, and add an energy to it, run current through it, run electric through it, we're going to get a nice soft pink glow. Nice soft pink glow. Great, the hydrogen glows. That's kind of weird, but how is that useful? Hmm. Now, you're all sitting in a room right now where we have tubes with a gas under low pressure with an electron stuck in either end of them and current running through them, and they're glowing. Point. The lights. And there was light. So, this is, this is handy. Okay, how is this related to atomic theory? So, now, everybody. This is the part you're all like. Okay, you get to lay down on the floor. <sighs> Come on. You can do it. Right now, what this is, you're never going to forget this in your life. It's not that dirty. Don't worry. I've been doing it all day. So, what this is, is the lowest possible energy state you can be in. Yes? None of you are allowed to fall asleep. So, this is the lowest possible energy state you can be in. This is your, are you ready for it? Ground state. <laughs> That's right. This is your ground state. So, we could put you in a higher energy state. <laughs> we could. So, I would have to add energy to your system. The preferred form of energy in our discussions today have been Dunkin' Donuts, Pumpkin Donuts. Sound good? Those are good. Are they yeah! Good? Are they well, I haven't either, but they sound wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, lots of sugar, lots of energy, lots of calories. Calories are energy, folks. Calories are energy. So, if I add some energy to your system, we can probably get you sitting up. So go ahead, you can sit up. Now, if we add enough energy to your system, we might actually, go ahead, only time in your life you're going to get a lot of stand on my chairs. We might actually get you into an excited state. This would be an excited state. So we went from a ground state to an excited state. We're at a much higher energy level. Now, you're not allowed to do this, Mr. Broken Ankle. If you were to <laughs> exactly, if you were to go back from this state to your lower energy state, you would have to give up all that energy that you took in the up here. Now we're not going to do the most graphic interpretation of that, <laughs> but you can go ahead and jump down to a lower energy state. You can you can sit in your seats now. So, <laughs> we'll put this up here. That's sure to make everybody dizzy. So, that's the difference in a ground state and an excited state. And electrons can go from a ground state to an excited state. <laughs> but we have to add energy to them. Guess what? How much energy we have to add to them? Not one pumpkin donut. So it's a discrete unit of energy. Yes, and now quanta and pumpkin donuts are forever connected in your mind. And that's why I have you do the research first, and then we, then we quanta donuts. Yes, that's, that's why we do this first, and then come back and talk about it. So we add a donut slash a quanta of energy to an electron. It jumps up from its ground state to its excited state. Now, when that electron falls back down to its ground state, it has to get rid of that energy again. It can't be in a ground state with that energy. Guess in what form the energy is given off? Light. Oh! So, when you take the hydrogen and you put it in the tube, and you pop the electron into either end and you run the current through it and you add energy to it, the electrons all jump up to an excited state, and when they fall back down, they give off this nice, pretty pink glow. I love kind 
It is cool, isn't it? When you, when you, because this stuff is like really hard to understand. Yeah, that's okay. That's why we're doing it this way. So, okay, we have that difference in ground state and excited state, and it's in specific in increments, and these increments are a quanta. So, when we look at that hydrogen, and we stick it in the tube, and we put the electron <coughs> each end, and we run the current through it, and it glows a nice pretty pink, if we take that pink light and we put it through a prism, have you all played around with prisms? We've made rainbows in prisms. You might have a little prism that you hang. I have one that hangs in my window at home, and when the sun comes through at about 8.30 in the morning at this time of year, which I like to see on weekends, um, there are rainbows in the living room. So when you, when you run light through a prism, it breaks it up into the whole spectrum of light. Well, the funny thing is, when we run that pretty pink glow from high, yes, like the painting on the wall. Good, thank you. Um, when we run the pretty pink glow from the hydrogen through a prism, we don't get the whole spectrum. We don't get the whole rainbow. <coughs> we get a little line. We get three little lines in the blue and purple range, and we get one little line in the red. So it's specific chunks of light. It's not a whole spectrum of light. It's chunks. Are you noticing a theme? Chunks. Yeah, chunks. this is chunky chemistry. Chunks. Chunks of energy, chunks of light, chunks of matter. When we run that pretty pink glow from the hydrogen through a prism, we get chunks of light. It's discrete little pieces. It's not a continuous spectrum. So, that difference between the ground state, laying on your belly on the ground, and jumping up on the desk, is one pumpkin donut or one quanta. It's not really a pumpkin donut. Those lines, those chunks of light that I can gain off, begin to suggest to some of the particle physicists that in fact the electrons are sort of living in specific energy states. That they have certain particular amounts of energy that are associated with them. And based on how much energy they have when they jump up and jump back down, that determines what color light they give off. So this gives us a new idea. And this is Niels Bohr, Danish particle physicist. And down at the bottom, he's pictured there with um, Uncle Albert smoking a cigar, talking about physics. <coughs> so what Niels says, what Bohr says, is that we've got that Rutherford model. And he says, you know what, that's, that's a pretty good model. That's not a bad model. We've got a little positive nucleus, and we've got little negative bits in orbit around it, but what he says is, rather than randomly being all over the place, they're in very specific tracks. And that those tracks have specific amounts of energy. And when you see a particular glow from an element, it's because that electron is jumping up to the next track and falling back down and giving off light in the process. And he says, the electrons can only be in these paths, they can only be in a particular place, and they can only have a particular amount of energy. They're always going to have those same amounts of energy. They can't be in between levels. So we've got a main energy level, and a second main energy level, and a third main energy level. Please release the boys' golf team. Bus leaves at 2.15. Please release now. So, this is great. He adds to Rutherford's model. Fantastic. And it works really, really well. Thanks to everyone that became a proud Beaver Local nerd today. The winner of the best nerd is Gwendolyn Kalalik. Please stop by.